Welcome travelers, Flocat here. It's time for the final episode in my combat camp series. We're going to be exploring building team rotations today. If you haven't seen the first two videos in this series, I highly recommend you check them out as they contain important information that you may want to know. Other than that, let's jump in. By the end of this video, you should understand the basics of building team rotations. But before we jump into that, Let's do a recap of what we covered so far. In the first video, we discussed the four main roles, which are main DPS hypercarry, sub DPS burst DPS, utility, and healing. In the second video, we went into the three guidelines I used to formulate and evaluate whether a team is effective or not. These were the elemental resonance of the team, the team's ability to create elemental reactions, filling the team with various roles, and considering how the weapon types might affect your combat experience. And now here we are, team rotations. I'm sure some of you are wondering, what are those in the first place? Simply put, it's just the order that you use your unit's skills in, as well as the timing for when you swap between them. Because each unit has cooldowns as well as specific durations for their skills, you will need to manage these to try to be as efficient as possible. This sounds like a lot, but I can break it down for you to make it simple to understand. First, let's cover the hypercarry composition. In hypercarry comps, you will start by activating your utility unit skills, preparing for reactions, or maybe funneling energy to your DPS. Then you will activate your DPS unit skills and use them to deal damage until either their skill duration runs out or your utility skills need to be refreshed. Then you repeat. Let me show you an example of this. Stabilize. Burst forth. Rain outlines your face. Witness the power of Gua. Know my sword. <laughs> Now that's all pretty simple. The game is made to make these kind of compositions work. The durations and cooldowns of the skills are designed to flow well in combat. A rotation can take anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds. Let's take it a layer deeper. I'm sure you noticed I didn't use all of my unit's skills. Zhongli and Albedo both have effective burst DPS and can be really good nukers, as well as utility units. Unfortunately, those skills cost energy, which limits their usage. Solidify. Coming to be. Huh? Ring cutter. Order guide you. Witness my great undertaking. This has been good. God's yeah. over. So what I recommend for any team is to design multiple rotations. Think of it like a decision tree. You start with a basic rotation, and I call this a minimal damage rotation. It's often easy to loop and something that you feel like you can always fall back on. Usually this comprises mostly of elemental skills. Next, you want to figure out a rotation where you can execute as many skills and bursts as possible. This I call the maximum damage rotation. Often this is harder to execute and may not always be available to you as you might have to funnel energy to some of your units. This is where experimentation and situational awareness become key. You already have your two basic rotations, the minimal damage rotation and the maximum damage rotation, one which is reliable and the other which is the maximum DPS potential for your team. From here, you need to figure out how you can better utilize set effects, weapon passives, or reactions to maximize your utility and damage for your team. On top of that, you have to know when to use the specific rotations. Against a group of small enemies, you may only need your minimal damage rotation, but in Abyss, you're probably going to use your maximum damage rotation as often as possible. At this point, I'd like to say that I understand that this might be overwhelming for people who haven't gamed much before. This can be complicated even for experienced gamers too, but really all it takes is just time to understand your unit's capabilities, how they synergize with each other, and then you just gotta play around. The overworld is basically a giant playground, and so go out, have fun, kill a bunch of stuff. It simply takes time. From here, I'd like to use the team that we created in our last video together for a brief showcase. I'll show you examples of minimal and maximum damage rotations, as well as potentially some other things. Leave me a comment below what you notice in this showcase, or maybe what you learned from this video. One with my foot. Life out. Spirit 
A touch of frost. Hold the line. Here we go. Think you can get away? Punishment. Submit for judgment. Swift and merciful. And we're back from the showcase. I'm sure many of you noticed that Rosaria was only the main DPS when Kokomi didn't have her ult. For the maximum damage rotation, Kokomi actually takes the field as the main DPS. This is kind of interesting. I didn't deceive you. It is a hyper carry comp with Rosaria as the main DPS when you're doing your minimum damage rotation. But when you do your maximum damage rotation, Rosaria switches roles to become the burst or sub DPS and Kokomi becomes the main DPS. This is just one of the many intricacies that you can find when building team compositions in Genshin Impact and why I encourage you to play around and see what you can find. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. From here, I will be doing a combat camp series that focuses on each unit specifically as I can get to them. Stay tuned for that. Like the video, subscribe, and as always, Stay healthy, stay hydrated, peace.